Hi, let's talk about the band of stability. So this right here is your band of stability. Now see this black line right there? That is showing the N to Z, which is the neutron to proton ratio equal to one, okay? So that's what we're comparing this against. Now this is a really cool diagram, love this, and um, many thanks to our CH302 <laughs> if you want to Google this. I really like this band of stability. Um, it's the color coding that makes it so cool. It is showing every single isotope, every isotope that we have from all of our elements. Um, and remember an isotope, that is simply um, two atoms. They have, of course, the same number of protons, they're going to be the same element, but a different number of neutrons. Um, so notice down here we've got number of protons, six through, and that's going to be our 118. And then here we have our number of neutrons on the y-axis. Um, so N stands for neutron, Z stands for proton. And what we do is we divide that so that we can get one number is the neutron proton ratio. And then it's been plotted, but it's been color coded. Okay, the black that you see right in here, kind of this like stair step little zigzag zig -zag line, those are the stable isotopes. I mean, look overall, very few isotopes really are stable. Great majority in comparison are actually unstable. So only the little black ones are the stable isotopes. Now, two are left right here. Notice this, the um, little B minus. Um, this is showing that these isotopes undergo beta decay. The isotopes on this right hand side, this orange, they undergo positron decay. So that would be, as a reminder, your positron, remember that your E with the plus one and the zero, and the beta is the E with the minus one and the zero. Now it's going to be, as we get um, close to 82, above 82, that's where we start to have our alpha decay. And you'll recall that the alpha decay is just a helium, just going to be our helium atom. Um, now, I don't know if you can see it, there's a light little purple right here, that's a neutron decay. So just a little bit of neutron decay. Um, now, a few facts that I want to give you about stability and, and using, interpreting this band of stability. Um, the most stable isotopes tend to have a neutron proton ratio of a perfect one to one. So they have the same number of protons as they do neutrons. Um, a great example of that would be a carbon 12. You've got six protons and six neutrons. Um, I see, or a one to 1 1.5. Now, while I'm on that, let me show you. After 20, um, or I should say up to atomic number 20, the um, atoms tend to have the same number of protons as they do neutrons. But after 20, which is calcium, um, our neutron to proton ratio, we are going to have more neutrons. So it's always a one point something. It's always greater than one, okay? The ratio is always greater to one. So up to 20, we tend to have a one ratio, um, but then after 20, it's always going to be greater than one. We need those neutrons to help stabilize the, the nucleus with all those um, positive protons so that they don't repel each other. Um, now, just kind of a little interesting fact. Um, you might be given a series of isotopes and have to predict which one would be the most stable. So an even number of protons and an even number of neutrons tend to be the most stable. So if you get um, an isotope that's both even number of protons, even number of neutrons, that's the one that you would predict would be the most stable. Um, if you're not in that situation, you look for even number of protons. Um, and if you don't have that, then you're looking for the even number of neutrons. If you have odd protons, odd neutrons, that's going to be the least stable. So that will help you kind of predict what's going to be the most stable isotope. Um, this is kind of interesting. Only our proton, so this is going to be helium-1, and our, excuse me, our hydrogen-1 and our helium-3, they're the only um, examples of isotopes where they actually have more protons than neutrons and they're stable. Those are the only two examples where we have stable isotopes where there's more protons. Um, otherwise, the stable isotopes are going to be equal number of protons, neutrons, or a one to a 1.5, typically, typically, okay? Um, let's see here, last thing that I wanted to share with you. It's right here, 82, that's lead. Um, it is going to be our last stable isotope after atomic number 82, so 83 on. They are only uh, radioactive isotopes. So notice this right here, 
that your last black dot, that's the last stable isotope. Beyond that 82, everything, every isotope, every element is going to be unstable. Okay, so that is how you can um, interpret the band of stability. If you ever have to calculate the neutron-proton ratio, it's really easy. All you have to do is, um, so let's take a calcium 40, okay? So here's my calcium 40. All you do is take the number of protons, so there's your atomic number, that would be my P, um, and we use Z in um, nuclear chemistry to represent protons. Um, that would be 20. And then you count the number of neutrons. Now remember, uh, mass number minus atomic number gives you the number of neutrons. So mass number up here is protons plus neutrons. Let me remind you, that's mass number. Then down here we've got the atomic number, and that equals protons. So mass number protons neutrons minus atomic number protons is going to give you neutrons. So when I subtract 40 minus 20, it gives me 20 neutrons. So you put 20 right there. 20 neutrons divided by 20 protons gives me one. So that would be a stable isotope. So you have to figure out the neutron proton ratio. Just use your mass number, atomic number, neutrons divided by protons. You'll be good to go. If you have any other questions on nuclear chemistry, um, look under the playlist that's entitled Nuclear. Um, and good luck. Have fun. Nuclear chemistry is fun. Have a nice day.